Oh yeah, but and, you know, even in the story, it's fine. But they they did it in Let Me In, but they show Owen, not the fucking full screen. <laughs> In your face, dude. They do get right. right. What we need there is like one of those old school movies where they had the sound that would go before something heavy would happen, or the they had the one with the glove, like Boarding House. They had mm-hmm. the hand, it would go like this on the camera and shit, and then oh, you knew something heavy was going to happen, and then right. bam, vagina, <laughs> bam, vagina, bam, vagina. That's what it was. If you want to become a member, check out our webpage at deathcursesociety.com and click on the membership tab. You could join for the cost of a couple of pre-rolls a month. Special thanks to our final girls and guys, Chris, Lorena, BD, and Tyrone. Uh, did we say happy birthday to Lorena last yeah, week? Of course. Okay, just, make, just making sure. Yeah, we did. All right. And uh, thanks to our crazy Rouse, Bell's Fancy Creations, Dr. Smiley, Ray, and the whole damn enchilada pod. And right. of course, thanks to our camp counselors, 42nd Street Pete, Corey, Luke, Jimmy and Rachel, Stacy Lynn, Orlando, Patricia, Kristen, and JJ. Thank you guys. Let's see. Oh yeah, here yeah. we can. You're gonna have to do that. We've decided that that shit don't work good. That the claps we have, so everybody gets gone. All right, uh, gang, this, Quickly became one of my favorite uh, formats of the episodes that we do. It's original versus remake night, where we discuss a film that's had an original film and then a, a remake, and discuss the merits of both, which was better, which was worse, and try to maybe come to some kind of decision. Let's talk about the uh, the opening scene first, because they do start differently. Yes. So... Uh, Ziggy, the first thing I noticed right away, it almost has like a the, the music, it very much sounds like the beginning to Sepultura Roots when it's coming in the tribal drums. We have a man in a hospital and a cop wanting to ask questions to why he's got a burned face. He's burned to fuck. He's all burned up, and uh, he comes out and they say, "Well, hey, there's a little girl that came to see him," and he was like, "What little girl?" Somebody screams. And they, there's horror. Like he has jumped out the window, and there's and a notepad says, "Sorry, Abby, I'm sorry." And they, that's it. That's how they start. This, this is the new one, Craig. I did a curve and started on the the let me in. Mm-hmm. So that's how. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 funny because the other one does start a little bit differently. I mean, I don't know, Crank. How does that one start, real quick? The original. The original. Uh, basically the original, uh, hold on. Let the right one in kind of starts with Ox- Oscar practicing, uh, dealing with the bullies in his mind as Eli moves in, uh, you know, it, I see why they did the different scene though. A, that's kind of a trend with American films is that non-linear aspect of the opening scene, especially. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? Right. You need that jarring moment or that, you know, that surprise moment at the top to get people's interest for the next 90 minutes or so. Um, it's a tactic employed by filmmakers and a huge trend at the time. And, and still, even to this day, it's I, I do think it's a little overused as a tactic overall, but most of the time it works. Um, you know. Had the script for Let Me In started with a lonely, half-naked boy staring out his window at a little girl and his and her dad move into an apartment building, it probably would have never been made, honestly. So, yeah. I mean, that's the major differences in the opening scenes, though, you know? I mean, you get, 
you get that opening scene a little bit later. A little later, yeah. They, 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 right. It's in there. You end up at the same place. That's right. what I was saying before you sat down. Um, I like the fact that Let Me In starts with that mystery of what is going on in the hospital because later on, that hospital scene has a little more tension to it, in my opinion. You know, a lot of people say, well, it takes attention out of it because you know something's going to happen. Yeah, you know something's going to happen, but that's part of it. You're, you're like, oh, shit. Like, what, what is going to happen? You know? uh, well, see, I think everyone has a point there that has seen Let the Right One In because by now you've already figured out when they show that that they're pretty right. much following this thing. Every main beat of Let the Right One In shows up in Let Me In. And they do. And, and it fine. does, and it's fine. Um, I, a lot of a lot of remakes don't do that, which I think is one of the reasons why we complain about some of these remakes is because they do go off on their own tangent sometimes. Did the difference in the opening scene, you know, bother you, or did, that no. it didn't start like the original, or that it no. you know because it felt familiar still. And because uh, I you know obviously just seen it again, and I was just going okay. This is out of out of sequence, though, right? It's obvious. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, all right, cool. So we're we're getting a little bit of here. We're gonna go back, and then yes, two weeks earlier or whatever it is. Right. Um. But yeah, it didn't bother me. No. All right. Did it bother you? No. No. no I, like I said, I actually preferred. I I liked that the opening scene was different, but. You know, just you got a little I'm bit okay of introduction in the original. It was him looking in the mirror, calling himself Piggy. Obviously, what the bullies call him, you know, right. and he's threatening himself in the mirror. I don't know, man. It's just it's 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 just relatable, you know. Well, let's yes. move on to the yes. uh, let's move on to the next topic here that I wanted to kind of dissect as we move ahead. Let's talk about character inter introductions. Uh, both films handle the introductions of their major character in pretty much a similar way with, with both films find subtlety throughout with these characters, which I do appreciate. Um, Oscar and Owen are both trying to build up confidence to deal with their respective bullies, but cower when the opportunity faces them. Likewise, Ellie and Abby are introduced in the same mysterious manner, arriving at night while being watched by their young neighbor. And then when the two main characters meet in the courtyard, the scenes play out nearly identically. Now, as will be made very clear throughout this episode, uh, I clearly prefer most of the scenes in Let Me In, primarily due to the casting of Chloe Grace Moretz and uh, Cody Smith McPhee. Uh, without having seen the previous film, both of these actors, and they've said they did not see the previous film before they made this movie. Now, granted, they were like 10 or 12 years old when they made it, so I don't, I don't think I'd let my 10-year-old watch this, uh, either one of these. But both actors take the same source material, and I think in Let Me In, elevate it beyond what was original offered in the Swedish film. Um, I like the actors in the original, but they didn't seem to portray as many of the emotions, and even in some of the subtle ways, as their counterparts in the remake did for me, at least. I counter counterpoint. I'm counterpointing. Um, <laughs> I, there's a simplicity to the original. There is, and it's it, it. Again, I'm sure some is lost in translation here because I'm not familiar with how they. But there are times when it does reach over, and the emotion is there, and you know. Especially when he's kind of like talking shit to her, he's like, "Who said I wanted to be your friend anyway?" You know, what I mean, like when he did stuff like that, it, you could, it, it crossed over. But yeah. I agree with you. I do think it was acted better. I think that uh, both talents far exceeded the two Swedish actors. But there's just a simplicity point for me. Wholesome, and I loved it, man. I just, it works. It just very much works. So it is. Yeah. You know, it's not really an like argument. Said, it's just more an observation, I think. Right. Like I said, I like the performers in the first in the original as well, but I just think overall, I have Chloe to agree. And and uh, they're better. They're better actors. They are yeah. clearly better actors. I think that movie let the right one in is was as independent as they come. Probably. I mean, it, 
you know, I don't, I don't they, still, really... they still gave a good performance for an indie film. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, trust me, we've seen worse. Oh. And anything to add on the uh, character intros? We'll get we'll get more into like the subtleties of the acting and the, and the characters in a minute, but if we need to, it's just good because you like in even in both of them, you don't really the 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 uh, the guardian, the father mm -hmm. figure for you know Abby and Eli. Uh, it's creepy and menacing. And it's a uh, very good. So I, I, I just I like the way they they did bring it out, and then you start to see completely the opposite of what they painted them to be. Very good in both films too. Right. Yeah. Well, and I I have not read the book, but I've heard that there's a pedophile element to uh, ha, ha, Hakar Hakar. How do you say his name? Hanuk. What what is his damn name? <laughs> uh, the know. dad. Or the 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 guardian, right? I don't That's remember his name. Come through in the uh, either film, really. Yeah, it, there there's more blatant pedophilia com, com, uh, concerning them in the book, from what Let's I understand. Face it, man. John Candy said it best in Splash: "All the finest erotica and weird shit comes out of Sweden." It's just a fact. <laughs> you. Know. Ew. Um, <laughs> I didn't know we were going to make a splash reference today, but oh, there right. you go, John Candy, rest in peace, man. John Candy, Hakan, yes, I think that's it. Thank you, Tarek. Uh, all right, let's get into the plot and changes because the, the stories are pretty much the same, except for some minor, minor shit. Uh, one thing that does seem to change for me is actually the the motivations of the, of the main characters. And I will, I'll try to briefly explain and let the white and let the right one in. Oscar is the real evil figure, but he's just not fully formed yet. And again, this is what I take from this movie. Uh, when Ellie meets him, she realizes that he could be useful as a, a new caretaker when Hakan uh, becomes obsolete, which happens sooner rather than later. And in the remake, Chloe Grace Moretz plays it slightly more. This is a terrible word to use after just mentioning pedophilia, but seductively. And I don't mean seductively in a sexual context. I just mean in, the, in a, like, alluring way. Uh, right. Yeah, you heard me. Uh, she's just reeling Owen in because she knows Hakan is getting tired and old. And she's seen it happen before and is preparing for it to happen again. I think in this respect, Chloe is kind of the evil of let me in while... Uh, Oscar is the evil in Let the Right One In. Well, what do you think, Ziggy? I that's don't, just one. That's just one difference too. Oh yeah, I, I I don't think Oscar or Owen are evil at all. I think Oscar is on his well on his way to psychopathia. <laughs> his psychopathic like, well, actions. I, I, I see two kids that have been pushed so far bullied so hard and getting no support from the parental units either way mm -hmm. i mean that god damn it that let and let me in it's it's heartbreaking when he talks to his dad you know what i mean it's devastating his dude just don't give a fuck man and it's just like he, he's really really reaching out and there's just nothing there man and it's like but, uh, but he's keeping he's keeping clippings of other murders in the neighborhood and things like that and like he's got a scrapbook of death and <laughs> you know he, next thing he's gonna do is like torture a cat to death he just hasn't found a cat yet he didn't he didn't go to that one that one girl's house that had all the cats that attack her later which we will talk about jesus christ i hate that scene yeah that was weird like but he is even before ellie shows up oscar is well on his way to uh sociopath murder uh, probably serial murderer, in my opinion. Owen, not so much in the remake. I think Owen would just be a... Go ahead and take a drink. I'll keep talking. I think Owen would just be one of those wallflowers that gets walked over for the majority of their life. Mm. Anyway. I think point. Oscar's, Oscar's life is less tragic. He probably shouldn't be such a bitch. <clears throat> And but uh, 
Yeah, I, I see you. You got it's a good point. He's got a scrapbook of of this kind of thing. But again, man, if you're getting fucking dicked around so much, dude, that's all, that's your only outlet is to fantasize about taking out the people fucking with you, man. Well, did Did you get bullied when you were a kid? Little bit, sure. Everybody, yeah. I think. Did you Did you keep a scrapbook of murders I, and other crimes no. in your neighborhood? I certainly fantasized murder, though. I mean, hundred percent. Sure. sure, but yeah. you know, I I got bullied when I was a kid. I didn't keep a scrapbook. So. Did you have a telescope putting out your window? That's usually I did, a not, I did not have a telescope. That, Red that was a creepy touch too. What were uh, some other differences in the movies that you uh, that you liked, Ziggy, or noticed at least? I, I appreciate you yeah, them? because that that was what was taking me out of the original was the Swedish culture. I just couldn't, you know. I I yeah yeah I can fucking accept it and I see it, but I don't get it. You know, a lot of it. So when what was the problem? It, what was the what was the thing that stood out to you that that like took you out so much just their dialect just some of the dialect and you know and i it's funny because even when i was in gym class we all put on the matching fucking shorts and shirts and shit and had to go out there and the swimming and everything mm -hmm. all real i guess they don't do that now too much but uh, yeah I, well, yeah breaking it over to let, let me in um and you know owen's it's devastating. His fucking, he's got a fighting parents. They're having a divorce going to happen and they're just vicious to each other. And she's preoccupied with this. So it's just, mm -hmm. oh, you know, he's getting bullied at school. He gets whipped in the face so bad he gets cut. And uh, he says, oh, I fell down. And, oh, be more careful, love. You got to be more careful. And then off she goes back to her room. You know, so it's that kind of shit, just that kind of parenting and stuff. And, well, there was a kind of a religious aspect to the mother in the in the remake too, though, which they played with a little bit. Like especially when Owen because, yeah. tries to call the dad and ask, you know, can people yes. be evil? And he's like, Ah, oh, shit! Is your mother getting in your head again? God damn it! Yeah. You know, yep. She's got. Don't stop listen to that religious shit. She's got to stop it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think that was a minor part of it, but I think part of that was, you know, since it was eighty three. You know, I doubt the Swedes had something called satanic panic like we did. You rem we talked about this a few months ago uh, on this show. They had the that, black metal thing going on there. You know, that was a well, but here it was satanic panic. And that was a big right. thing in the early 80s and, and all through the 80s, really. You know, and the fact that Matt Reeves kind of intertwines <clears throat> that uh, while also setting it in 83 during... Uh, Reagan's evil empire speech at the beginning, you know, and all these little, these little things, you know, uh, of course the music is always, you know, there for, you know, uh, nostalgia reasons, you know, and to put you back in that time frame, you know, when they go to the arcade, especially and let me in oh, and the, you know, two, two culture club, two culture club songs play yeah. and the person behind the counter looks like somebody out of culture club. So it looks like boy George, you know, he's got that little, that little dread or whatever that's hanging down when he takes the money. And I think, no, maybe not either that one or the kid at the gas station, uh, that is the cashier, uh, is Chloe Grace Moretz real brother. I think oh, right. one of those two, I'm, I'm not sure who though, but you know, I know that's kind of common when you know the the music the clothing the arcade games etc you know but i there was one point i like the psa that's on tv you know it's yeah. 10 p.m do you it's know where your kids are yeah. yep but but the great the great thing about that shot is the reflection of the door with owen leaving and the door closing and mm -hmm. that being on the screen it's such a great shot and uh and i remember you know. those you know any any unexplained death, mutation, or, you know, pretty much any crime was attributed to that cultural scare of the satanic panic. So I don't think that's that far of a stretch for hmm. the filmmaker, especially an American filmmaker, to play with that in this instance, you know? Yeah, so, it's, it I doesn't, like it. no existing, that's not in the original at all in any capacity. They just kind of, that's, the huge difference was... Putting those parents were just so horrible, man. God, I just they were you know, all bad. I, I was just going like, you see, Colonel. No, that is bad parenting. You know, he's he's 
he's always so down on himself. He's the best fucking dad on the fucking planet. I mean, this fucking guy and uh, and there's people like this walking around that are in real life, too, I'm sure. Not just the fucking movies, but uh, but it breaks your heart because the kid just he just needs he just needs a fucking hug pretty much, man, from one of his fucking parents and he can't get it. You know, that's I. I bought it there. I was like, you know what? I want to hug that fucking kid. Come here. Yeah, that kid needs that kid yeah. needs a bunch of hugs. You got another difference there, Ziggy? You want to talk about? I've got a list of them. If you, oh, I know. I thought the hey, uh, the bullies are much oh, yeah. much dickier. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the remake, you know, you can go there if you want. But they're the but they're more set in reality for America. That's again, again. Again. That's the guy I had to fucking deal with. Really? That's exactly one of the guys I had to deal with, except he was like a foot taller. Amazing. I mean, I was, and little, that, I was a little midget until I hit like ninth grade and then I sprouted. But And you get to see what kind, why this dude, Kenny, is such a dickhead, you know? And, right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And Connie in the original doesn't have that relationship with his brother. Well, they don't show it like that. They, but don't, they don't show it, at least. But. It's almost like an honor thing. You know, he has to do it. You know, this guy's a fucking psychopath in the new yeah. one. Kenny is absolutely, like, you know, definitely getting, you know, abused at home oh, yeah. and just carries it over to, you know, school where he can be the abuser. So that was one of my notes is like, who's the, the bad guy beating up the bully? And then, like, you know, obviously later on we discover, oh, the brother. There it yeah. is. Yeah. It's not the way you described it last uh, night. I know, but I already <laughs> used that joke tonight, so, yeah. <laughs> Where's that finger go? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, another big difference in, in the two films is the way uh, the character of Hakan finds and captures his victims. In the original, his tactics are basic, but get the job done. He just finds someone walking in a secluded area and grabs them, you know, with a little drug. Uh, and let me in. I think Richard Jenkins' portrayal was far more terrifying and more fitting for, for an American audience, I will say. Um, the idea of someone being in the back seat was a growing concern in the 80s. And it's part of the American culture. So sure. it fits. Now, I don't know. Did Sweden have a... Uh, um, you know, urban legend of people hiding in the back seat of their cars. I don't know. Do you remember Swedish cars back then? They didn't even have a back seat, right? You know what I mean? There was nobody fitting in the fucking car. They didn't have to worry about that shit. So that's why that wasn't there. I thought it was a great touch. Uh, the bag. He wears a black bag on his face with the eyes cut out. It's terrifying. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it did look freaky. Yeah, yeah. there's a good type of that. Yeah, that back seat thing though is also played up in a '90s. You know, classic horror film. I know what you did last summer. So, or no, uh, Urban Legend. Urban Legend. Well, it? I mean, that's, that's man one of the two. Though. They put this shit on its ear because instead of him, you're just waiting for him to sit up and attack this guy that he wants to get his blood. And then he stops and picks up. Hey, my my ride left. Can you give me a ride home? So the dude, I love that. I love that second one. Huh? I love that second abduction oh, because dude. it's so tense, dude. I mean, it puts you in like the back seat, like, oh my <laughs> right. god. How the hell did they do that, man? I mean, it's like mm -hmm. not even feeling bad for the fucking killer and shit, dude. It's brilliant. Now, the second abduction in in the original was good too, but it there's there's not a whole lot of tension except for, you know, oh they found him. He's in this room. They're yeah. knocking on the door. Yeah. Oh, they're beating on the door. It it's it just the stakes felt higher. It yeah. let me in. And this one ends with a fucking inside the car crash. That's fucking awesome. A great crash scene. A yeah. great crash scene. So, I, mean, um, I think altering that character in that fashion makes makes that second abduction scene a lot more tense because we know he's going to be discovered at some point by one of the boys. We just don't know when. And by the time he is, shit's on. You know, and I loved it. Instead of taking, you know, he can't be discovered because he knows if they figure him out, they're going to figure out where he lives and they're going to figure out that... Abby is there at the house or wherever he's from. And so he takes the acid and freddies himself. Hmm. And uh, it was, you know, and then it kind of catches us up to where it starts at that point. Mm -hmm. And let me in. 
because they never, you know, right. that part just transpires where he's going to get caught. There's no getting away. So he takes the acid and just does it to himself again. Just like, just like, you know, ends up in the same place, a hospital high up. Right. Which, uh, again, like a, a lot like Annabelle with the, remember the you mean Abigail, Abigail, damn, okay. Abigail. <laughs> Um, let me point out another difference that I like better and let me in and I'll explain why, um, who is on the vampire's trail basically during, you know, during this movie and let the right one in. It's just some drunk whose friends have been attacked and he's looking for revenge, which, okay, I can buy that in a, in a way, but it, it seems weird to me. And let me in. It's a detective that's trying to solve a series of, of murders and disappearances, which honestly mm-hmm. makes more sense to me. And I'll go even further because I love Elias Kodiaz in anything he does. Yeah. He's just underutilized in this, but he plays it well. So and he didn't uh, deserve it either. But I mean, I, I didn't. The other guy was kind of like, "Fuck you," you know. You're what are you doing? You know. I mean, none of these people really deserve that. <laughs> we kind of left things alone, though. I mean. When it gets to that point, <clears throat> once you realize what what is happening, why would you fuck with that? You know what I mean? At least none of the victims, the the guy that acid in his face, deserved to do that. I felt bad for him too, but I couldn't get over Step Brothers. He's the dad in Step Brothers, and it's fucking hysterical. Richard Jenkins. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, mean, by the way, it was it was uh, his birthday a couple of days ago. So happy birthday to Richard Jenkins. <laughs> Damn, everybody born early May. Yeah. Uh, one more little difference that I wanted to point out was there's a slight difference in between the scenes where Eli and or Ellie and Abby enter Oscar's and Owen's apartment uh, without an invitation. Ah. And in the original, Ellie is kind of goaded into entering by Oscar. And yeah. in the remake, Abby kind of enters on her own, almost not necessarily as a test because she knows he's going to save her. Um, and so she's almost just doing it to prove a point that Owen would never allow anything to hurt her. And I thought that was a, a good touch. I you don't know, think Oscar believed she was really a vampire at that point until that that drove it the fuck home. You know, I mean, yeah. okay, you know, I mean, but that bring that comes back to my point about the the the, the motivations for the the characters, especially Ellie and Abby, were different in the two movies. Maybe not by a bunch, but they were different. You know? I just, I see two damaged little boys. Well, of course. Yes. <laughs> uh, Grizzly says, one of the big ones in Let Me In is it spelled out how long the caretaker has been with her. Yes. I have, I have some things to say about that later on. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, because that kind of took me aback. I had to... I had to stop and look at that again. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I mean, like, they allude to it. I, yeah, I mean, but I, the I other was one, like, but what's that, you know, and then I was like, oh, dude, I kind of like, I can't really talk about that yet. That's for later. That's for later. Right. Um, some of the things about uh, characters and acting, let's jump into that. Uh, as I've stated, I think Chloe Grace is, is one of the finest young actors of the century. And uh, with this role, she won multiple Breaking Artist and Newcomer Awards from multiple outlets and probably deserved every single one of them. Uh, Cody, as Owen, is equally as good. And for two 12-year-old actors to carry a film like this is a very rare treat. Uh, in their early scenes together, I love the singular attitude uh, of like avoidance and distance that Abby shows to Owen. But even in the early scenes, when Owen turns her back to Abby, you can see a little more of her loneliness and longing kind of sneak through. In the other, in in the original, I wasn't so impressed with those kind of subtle moments. I mean, they were still there. They just weren't as... They weren't as well done, in my opinion. But um, I also think Owen showed growth in the character throughout the film, starting as a cowering bully to someone who can occasionally stand up for himself, even if he does return to a cowering figure. 
uh, near the end of the film, you can kind of feel that sense of connection that he gets with, with Abby and doesn't with anyone else, especially his family. Um, any points to make about acting and the characters that we haven't already talked about there, Ziggy? I mean, I, you got it pretty solid, man. I, uh, but the old one, I, it, man, that fucking really sucks. I mean, and I know nothing about aesthetics of the eighties in Sweden. You know what I mean? That's the other right. thing that I was, uh, um, but I mean, I, again, just, it was so much simpler, but I mean, the one thing they really got through to me and I liked a lot were these fucking guys, these caretakers were fucking tired, mm -hmm. fucking done with this and did Both that them more. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and, uh, I think the whole point all along, even though I do believe that, uh, you know, uh, Abby was a bit more like, you know what? I, 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 I kind of enjoying this contact with this person, you know, but mm -hmm. I think the whole thing all along was to pretty soon get to get to get a new caretaker. That was became the mission in both. Well, there, there's definitely an, and while I like the the acting from uh, Lena Lee Anderson and and Kare Hildebrandt in the original as the the two young actors, um, th their their performances just don't seem to be as emotionally deep to me. Now, yeah. that may be because I identify a little bit more with the American characters in the remake, um, because there there's that innocence and longing in those characters that I think we can. We can all relate to, especially at that age. I mean, I, we all remember those long night, long nights on the phone when we were, you know, in those those kid love relationships or whatever you want to call them. You know, who was going to hang up first? Don't hang up. Just put the phone next to you and let me let me listen to you sleep while I go to sleep. You know that kind of shit. You know, you remember those days? You know, maybe. Okay, Ziggy's not a romantic. <laughs> uh, I I never did that one. I never kept the phone next to me. You know. I was the guy that would be like, all right, bye. Click. <laughs> and, and have, some, and have some other hoe on another line. Oh, hell, oh my God. Oh, come on. God damn it. Rip. Huh? Damn it. I, the romance in this movie, in both of these movies for me, it was weird. I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't believing the 12 year old and the 12 year old, if you get my gist. Right. And. Uh. The, well, the writing not, of the romance, even if they were just two 12 year olds, it was a little clunky for me. I don't know. Just, we'll get into that a little later. It's not necessarily a, a romance romance, but it's just that that connection and loneliness that companionship. they're both. Yeah, companionship that they're both able to kind of, you know, experience out sure. you know, away from. Yeah, you can call that romance if you want, but. It's just labeled a romance horror. Absolutely, yeah. it is. Well, I and I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it is. But I mean, it, it, I think it's it, it, a lot of it hung on both Abby and Ellie, you know, uh, as the vampires. And I thought they did pretty good with the experience thing, being vampires mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe but it, not. It was subtle. Yes, they never like went right out and said, "Oh, I've been three hundred years" or anything like. Abigail. Right. How old is did they ever establish how old Ellie or I already forget the let me in one name? Um uh they didn't officially no. Uh Chloe uh, as an actress kept a diary on set. This was a recommendation from the director from Matt mm -hmm. Reeves. He asked the the characters to keep a diary in character uh on set, and she came up with a backstory that her character was two to three hundred years old and was turned uh, by her uncle. Now, there is more in the book that was left out, of, especially of the original, but, well, no. It, it, it is left out in the original, but there is a moment where you kind of see something that uh, explains her turning, but nothing okay. in the movies themselves uh are spelled out. So, uh, since we're talking about acting, let's do it. Ellie versus Abby. Your thoughts. Z. Well, we know where you're at on this. So, I mean, yep. 
Yeah. Um, again, I, I'm going to keep saying it simplicity and, but delivered uh, masterfully. Or if these are uh, amateur actors, they really, they, they, they understood the homework assignment. And uh, I thought they did well in Sweden over there. Obviously, they went and got the best they could get to do what was available. They picked the top of the fucking list for both characters, Abby and fucking Owen. And uh, they, they obviously knocked it out of the park a little bit better. I, I, it's funny. I don't know, man. I, I, you're saying the, neither one of them saw the source material before. I, I don't know. I don't that's know. what they. That's what they say. Now, clearly, Matt did because he pretty yeah. much duplicated multiple shots, multiple scenes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and one thing <laughs> I noticed, one thing I noticed the other night was he duplicated them, but he mirrored a bunch of them. Did you notice that? Yeah. There was a lot of layers and stuff on things I thought that were different from the original, you know? that. Well, no, I mean, he physically, like, if oh, Owen yeah. was on this side of the screen... Right, they were literally mirrored. And, like... and you know, uh, Abby was on this side. In the original, it was Oscar on this side and Ellie on this side. But it's the same fucking scene. Yeah, and, but there were lots of in glass and mirrors and shit, too. But, with that. but they it, do that a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. He does this a lot. Like, the the... The final scene, the opening scene in the uh, the courtyard where he's stabbing the tree. You yeah. know, in one he's stabbing this way, and the other he's stabbing this way. It's it's bizarre. Uh, mm -hmm. Just fast forward through some of it, you know, and and you'll see. It's it's freaking bizarre, man. I, w once I saw like two or three cases of it, I was kind of like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" And <laughs> I started paying more attention. I was like, "Weird," but <laughs> so like. He had no problem changing some of the angles, but he apparently he had a problem changing some of the script because, dude, I'm telling you, 90% of that script was the same. It's identical. It, it's yeah. practically identical. Like, fuck. All the it's, beats, the biggest beats are in both films. It's almost as bad as the, uh, what was it, 2006, the Omen remake? No, oh, Jesus. Was that when that was? I think so. When it, whenever it was. That, but did, the, that, that lacked and many levels but the script Copied was identical the it was so identical that the guy who wrote the remake script lost lost the legal battle with the writers guild to have his name on there the original writer from the 60s movie is credited with writing the remake <laughs> way to go that's how close that one is and it's still not anywhere near as good if if uh if let the right one in had been an American film, also, mm -hmm. there'd probably be there'd probably well, be a be battle issues. over that. But there since it's a Swedish issues. film, it doesn't have anything to do with the Writers Guild, so at least not WGA of America. So, mm -hmm. um, well, they had to have something going on because Hammer bought those rights right away. They said they well, they bought the rights, but I mean, rights. The the author or the the screenwriter of the original couldn't lobby or sue, you know legal action to get credit on the remake they offered like it to the, the they offered it to the other director he said no yeah, and he turned it down i don't want to remake my own film i don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with it two years later for crying out loud like that has to be a bit of a huh what yeah about, you know? well the, like i said though the rights were even grabbed before the movie was released it had been on like mm -hmm. two festivals or something like that and hey we want to do this too uh sp sp to stay on Ellie versus Abby for a minute. Uh, I think the understanding and maturity that Chloe Grace Moretz brings to uh, all of her characters, really, at such a young age is beyond impressive. Uh, Lee Anderson is quite good as well, but I got to give the edge to uh, Chloe Grace on this one because she's my girl. Uh, she looked who, do you, who do you give the edge to, acting-wise, Ellie versus Abby? Who do you give the edge to? Are you asking me for FaZe? Both of you. Okay. Go ahead, FaZe. Mm -hmm. That is... For this one, it's difficult. I mean, for the boy, it's a lot easier for me, but... <sighs> I lean slightly Ellie. Very slightly. Mm -hmm. I don't even have, like, good reasons for it. I just... That's how I'm feeling. Faze. I'm going to uh, Abby... 
a tick for the win just be based on her in vampire mode makeup and stuff and how she played it when she was in vampire mode. Mm. I thought mm. she did because they didn't really do any of the crazy eyes or anything on, you know, Ellie or anything. Mm. The really violent scenes were a lot better with Ellie. I'll say that. Okay, fair enough. Like during the scenes where she's attacking some people, like they use like that speed up technique in the remake that I don't really like right. too much. They didn't do that in the Swedish version. It was a lot more authentic. I like that. Yeah. Fair enough. That was I, that's that's bad. more the director than the actor though, but still. Yeah. I excuse that, but I I understand the uh -oh. I understand the uh, uh that being a distraction or a, a detractor for for the film. All right. Uh like like Ellie versus Abby, how about Oscar versus Owen? This is easy. Owen. Why? He's just way more of a, a deep actor than the guy who played Oscar was. And I, I felt the Oscar character looked like they had to do some quick edits on some of his stuff a lot. And that camera stayed locked on Owen most of the time when he was delivering. So mm -hmm. sure. That's mm. what I noticed. Phase. There we go. Yeah. Phase. I mean, I'll agree with that. Owen's like actor was clearly more like professional for obvious reasons, but I mean, I'm saying Oscar, but it's another close one. I I just I just liked Oscar more. I guess I don't know. Huh. Oh, okay. Like Owen was just you know almost a little too. I don't know if, if it was in the script or in the directing, but it's almost like too, like, I can't even think of the word. Like, too weak? Not even that. Too like, uh, effeminate? No. Like, like the, in the other, like, I'm going to have to think about that a little more, right. I guess. I don't know. What are your think, thoughts? Think about it. Think about He's it. He's a little too house by the cemetery for me. A little bit, I guess. I'm not even sure. I'm not even quite sure what that means. The kid in House by the Cemetery, Bob. Oh, the bad dub. Like you know, at least he's not. At least he's not like the kid in uh, Over Maximum Overdrive. No, Owen is the Hollywood budget actor. Oscar, I don't know. I, I, I just I can see the effort more. I guess. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Uh, look, uh, this might sound odd, but I have a hard time feeling bad for Oscar. I I, I, don't, I don't feel bad for either of them. You made I know. The I do. bullying aspect, Owen. yes, but you know, and I think you're supposed to feel bad for for Oscar, especially in times. But you know, Owen Owen shows those emotional scars, uh, you know, from being bullied on his face, while Oscar most of the time just kind of stood around with with that look on his face. Sure, <laughs> you know? Owen kind of looks like a young phase there. If you took the beard and the mustache away, look at him. Oh no, he he does he. Uh... Childhood pictures of me. He looks a lot like me. Wow. I can see that. Oh, here comes the. I don't have handy. one handy. Um, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, the characters' mo motives are quite a bit different in the subtext because even before Ellie shows up, like I said, I think Oscar was on the path of being a psychopath. So I don't really, I don't really feel. You can't say that though, man. How? Can yes, I can. That kid is. That kid is one summer away from torturing a cat just for fun. One summer vacation away. He's probably already, like, boiled the ants with his magnifying glass or the telescope. I think he smacked Connie right upside his head and was like, all right, I got it out. But he felt glee when he does that. But where... he, he wanted to tell... For sure, he had to tell the, his girl. Sure, but he, but Oscar feels glee for doing it, while Owen is just like, Jesus Christ, what have I done? You know, yeah. he, he like starts to like freak out again. You know, he still Which, had. Well, he he was kind of fronting when he was boasting to her about it. Yes, I yes, agree. of course. You know, um, I. Oscar would have killed Connie and his friends if he could have figured out a way to get away with it. Oh, sure. I'll say that. I don't think Owen would have. In a 12-year-old mind, 
and you've been bullied enough, dude. I can I can fucking see it. I I don't see it. Like he would. I think it would stop with the destruction of his bullies, and he'd never speak of it again. I don't know. I don't know with what these these characters were supposed to become by the end, without spoiling too much. I mean, Oscar was definitely the more like believable. I mean, Owen is like every Hollywood movie's bully child, whereas Oscar is like, yes, this person is gonna become a fucking psychopath. Like, you know what I mean? Poor man. Oscar, man. I even feel worse for him now. Like, if both of these kids were presented in front of me, I would like Owen more. But for this character. It's more Oscar. That's uh, you no, know, that's that's where I'm leaning. All right. All right. All right. Let's get into. Uh... I hated Oscar in the pool. I can say that uh, those scenes were like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could feel. It. Yeah. There were a lot of scenes. There were a lot of scenes of Oscar I didn't like. In your fucking mouth, please. Let's get into writing and direction. Uh, Phase, you, you, I'll let you start. You got any thoughts? To well, let me in. Did a whole lot of. Control C and Control V, which for those of you that don't know, that's copy and paste. And uh, especially with the writing, yes. And well, in the script, yeah. The direction, you know, definitely a lot of different, you know, directions there, especially in the beginning. What they chose to do with the intro scenes, you know, the remake, the one that sort of cold open type thing. I actually preferred that. You now, the, probably the first nice thing I'm saying about the remake so far. But, uh, <laughs> I have a lot of shit to say about the original too, but it's just, I mean, I don't know. Two very different, I mean, the direction, not bad in the remake. The writing, I was not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> was, you didn't do I nothing, think, man. I think those guys were said, hey, we want this Americanized. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I, I don't like Americanized things usually. Especially yeah. when it's two years after the fucking original, like holy crap, dude! Give it a little bit of time to age, like. I, I yeah, man. I just remember going like, God damn it, you guys just can't fucking learn. It just doesn't work. And then this comes along and not bad. It's right. okay. Yeah. Ziggy, anything about the writing and direction you want to add? I think uh, story driven for Swedish. Very much so, and they they just laid on that just this fascination, this of such a weird dynamic with a bully, a vampire, and and dysfunctional family. It's it's great, you know. Um, we've already said Matt Reeves uh, is a rising star. Uh, he's since this movie came out, he's done much much bigger things, and mm -hmm. uh, he's not going anywhere. So I mean, he did a bunch of Planet of the Apes yeah. remakes and. And of course, like you mentioned, the Batman from 2022. Yeah, sure. And and he's the next one. He's doing and the next one coming yeah. out in 25 or six, yeah. whatever. Take your time with it, and please do. It's a Joker film. Let's do it right. Tom Thomas Alfredson, who who made the original, has done a handful of films, but the most well known outside of this one is uh, Tinker Tailor uh, Soldier Spy. With what? <laughs> T Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy with Gary Oldman. What? What did you say? No, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's a Gary Oldman flick. You know it's got to yes, be at least yes. good. I've seen just about every Gary Oldman because he's one of my favorite chameleons on the planet. Yeah. Um, I, I will say I like some of D Reeves' direction more in Let Me In and one of the main reasons and I was trying to allude to this earlier and I, I cut myself off because I wanted to save it for this. He gives the actors, especially the kid actors, he gives the actors room to breathe in their scenes and he, he makes it okay. And he did the same fucking thing in the Batman. Um, he makes it okay to fill the scene with silence and let the characters, you know, react to something yeah. before they respond. Mm -hmm. And in the original, those scenes felt a lot more rushed, but there are just totally. moments where there's nothing being said, you know, and it's just as powerful with, especially with those two fucking actors mm -hmm. that it works. Um, that's, and I think that's where, Chloe and 
and Cody really shine in those quiet moments together. Now, on the other side, and let let the right one in, Thomas Alfred or Tomas, excuse me, Tomas Alfredson. Uh, he utilized a lot of wide shots and panning movements that really basic, but also kind of amateurish and, and indie. Uh, and it kind of, there, there are moments where it's a, a shot like that. And it kind of, it kind of distracts me, uh, just because just technically it, it distracts me a little bit. So, uh, but yeah. Not at all. Uh, really? His style tells a story so well. And while my, a lot of it, basic textbook filmmaking, basic. done well. Done well. And uh, doesn't take you away from what's happening with the characters. All right. Well, I mean, and I'm not saying it's not done well, but and I, there are a couple of shots that I like. Like, from him um one is when hakan is getting his first victim in let the right one in and it's that wide ass shot of the, of the woods and yeah, he's just kind of standing there like kind of hovering behind a tree and then somebody comes jogging into the you know and they're they're pretty much this size you know on the screen yeah you know? and you've got this whole other big screen of white and brown with the trees and you see this guy come jogging in and he's like Oh, hi, what's going on? You know, the DPs <laughs> both need to be commended because they both had some pretty nasty wide they shots. Were... Yeah, they were pretty cool. Oh, God. I never thought I never thought I'd bunny bunny foo foo a recreation from Let the Right One In, but I guess I just did. Nah. That's all right. It, it, I knew what you meant when you did it. You knew exactly what I meant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, and I, I'll tell you what, uh, and let me in. The harvesting of blood was much rowdier, no, oh, yeah, and cooler. So, yeah. I mean, um, I, I think, yeah, though, but I mean, but I think they both had pretty cool visuals. I mean, shots and the things they picked, yeah, obviously more base. This guy wasn't a season when he made this, the original. Well, neither was Reeves when he, I mean, he was a young director then, but yeah, but he'd already he was, had some. He had already written a bunch of shit. Right. And he directed, what was it? Uh, the Paul Bearer. Oh, yeah. With David Schwimmer. Yeah. I don't know why the fuck I would know that, but I mean, I did see it, so. Best scenes in, mm. I, in both. Like, what is your favorite scene or two in the original, and what's your favorite scene or two mm. in the remake? Fuck. That's actually a good question. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who wants to start? <laughs> Should make Faye start. I don't know. Like, I'll let you guys think for a minute. I mean, it's. Do you know? Do I know? The crank. I, well, I have notes. He's yeah. got ten things well, written down. What are you talking about? I have. I have fair enough. Notes, dude. Oh yeah, so there you go. I came prepared, and I'm already three pages in. Well, there you go. <laughs> I liked the bleeding scenes. I like when she was not invited in? The blood harvestings. Oh, the blood the bloodlet. Okay. Yeah. Um I did like the they stuck to that. They actually vampire rules were in full effect with this movie, you know, sunlight and all that shit. As far as we know anyway. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, the inviting a vampire in. And I, I was sitting there wondering, like, what is the was this just like a? How did this become something? I have to figure that one out. I was wondering that too. That ain't no. I didn't read that. No Dracula or interview. Like what the fuck is that? There's a. There's a church shit, thing. I can't it? remember. I can't remember what it is, but I do remember. You know, reading up on that at some point in my life. Huh. Like there, there is a reason that it is that way, but I can't remember what it is right this second. Fair it's, enough. It's one of the pillars of vampirism, and I would. I found myself thinking about that while we were watching it. But I mean, that was very cool. I dug it because. I can't think of another film where a vampire walked in uninvited and started to melt. That's a good point. Uh, didn't Dracula Dead and Loving It, didn't Leslie Nielsen do some kind of parody on that? How dare you compare that to a real vampire or Dracula movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he has a point. You said no other vampire movie has done that. There's a vampire movie that I think did that, but I can't remember it right off the top of my head. Do you remember? Mm. No. No. All right. I would have to agree for let me in on the the blood draining, <laughs> the harvesting. It was really good. Wits, when he stuck that dude. Yeah, dude, that was so good. It's a puncture, man, and it looks fucking right. It looked good. For let the right one in, uh, the one scene that popped in my head just because it made me laugh was uh, like in the gym, I suppose, when dude like ties the kid upside down. It just kind of cuts to him already tied up upside down. It's it was like the, it was a funny quick cut to me. It made me laugh. I like that. It's like oh. Already done. We don't we don't get to see any of this process. Nope. No blood for you. And he's I not found, even sweaty or nothing. I found the uh well, finding the body the bodies in the ice was disturbing pretty much mm. in both accounts. They were both good, yeah. Mm. Um I like that it was the kids that find them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Screaming their asses off. That's and, how it would be. And and that on different sides of like the world in the right. movie, like one kid screaming because he got the fucking shit smacked out of him with a metal pole, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of kids are screaming because they found some dead body in the ice. And teacher going, "What the fuck?" Yeah, Jim. Teacher's like, "What the fuck? Where do I go first? Yeah, I feel like they handled that better and let me in. Yeah, mm -hmm. another point. Another point for the remake. Point for the crate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the inevitable ending. Was I, I, in the pool? Was that was pretty fucking cool? I mean, it could have been a little bloodier, but it, it was definitely effective. You know, it's like mm. ah, cool. You know, just the save. <laughs> All right, some of my some of my favorite scenes. One that's in let the, let the right one in uh, is actually a scene that's not even included in the remake, and it's when Ellie asks Oscar uh, to be like me, and for a while, yeah, be like me for a while. And you get that sense that, you know, mm -hmm. when she's, you know, locked into his head, she's in there and she's showing him like, here's some of what I've gone through over the last 200, 300 years. You that, know? I really like that. That's true. I love that scene. Um, we get the feeling that he's experienced all this heart, all this uh, pain, trauma uh, in just a few seconds. And that's heartbreaking to me. I love that moment. Now, they actually did film this scene for the remake, but it got cut from the film. And they changed it just a little bit, which I kind of, I don't necessarily want to say I like it better, but I appreciate what they were trying to do with it. And we have that scene right here. I'm going to throw it down here somewhere. So, uh, I've, and I've muted it. So it won't, it shouldn't do anything, but there, there is a moment here where when she does this scene and she's like, be like me. And again, you'll notice it's reverse from let the right one in. Um, little phase. That's all I can see now in this, <laughs> in this, he sees her transformation. I think her being turned into a vampire i think so it's very it's very bizarre i'm i'm okay with the fact that they took it out because see here he is seeing through her eyes and it's like this traumatic scene yeah, again good one. much simpler she says be like me for a while and you totally understand what she And you made. get it. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it better without this, but I wanted to show this just because I thought this was an interesting scene. Glad they cut this. Um in the remake, I think one of my favorite scenes is when Abby goes to visit Rakan in the hospital. And, and I think that whole sequence is absolutely fucking wonderful. Um again, in the original, it feels forced. Or not forced, but rushed. Um, yeah. And I like I like Owen's reaction at the end of the scene where he snaps out of it and he's just got that one solo tear going down his cheek. I think he's, I think he does a really good job with that. Um, and that should be about it. Hold on. I think he's deciding right there. I am going to take care of you. Right. 
Um, anyway, back to the hospital scene in the remake. I love when they're at the window together and you can see him kind of resign himself to her and be like, look, we knew it was coming one day. It's done. And he just kind of like bows her head over his head over. <laughs> yeah, pretty much doing that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying and, to find an old picture. And Is Chloe it... and uh, uh, Abby doesn't just rush into it. She She looks there for a minute and, you know, you can sense that going through their history for the last 50, 60 years, however long they've been together. And it was, it was a touching moment. I like that moment a lot. Um, and like I said, Reeves gives his actors time to breathe. And that a lot of that scene is silent. A Richard Jenkins can't talk at that point. He's acided himself out, you know, By the way, acid makeup looks right. good. Yeah. In both movies though, I think in both movies, it looks good. I prefer it in the in the remake, honestly, but I think it looks great in both movies. They put a little more into the effects in the new one, newer one. Yeah. Um, and somebody we mentioned it earlier, but I do also like the scene where Owen finds the pictures of Abby and Hakan uh, as a young man together. Yeah, I, I you can you can say, oh, they're just they're. They're spelling too much out for the audience. You know, they think the audience is stupid. You can say that if you want. I, yeah, I, I had to like that. And then the second time I clicked on it, they, they've they obviously taken a childhood picture of dude or they at least super made a young face and put it on that picture, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's fucking him. I like, I like that moment um, because the face that Owen makes when he realizes that's not her, like her dad is... You know, and he find he realizes it's it's someone just like him who's just grown older with her. Next in line, uh, yeah. I, I, his, his reaction at first, like, I don't want to fucking be this guy. You know, wait. I, I like that a lot. They allude to an, a relationship of, of that sort in the original, and they don't spell it out. Yes, and I appreciate that too. But I like, I like where they took it with spelling it out in the remake. I think it just strikes a more emotional tone when you see that photo, when he's got that birthmark under his eye and everything. So, mm -hmm. All right. Any other be best scenes? Because if not, yeah, we can talk about the CGI cats and the worst scene. Oh, my fucking God, dude. There were some real cats, but like 95% of them were CGI, and this shit was ridiculous. Oh, my God. I was pissed. <laughs> I'm like, what is this shit? When somebody mentioned CGI cats last week, yeah, I was like, huh, what what CGI cats are they? And I was thinking of the remake. <laughs> I had forgotten. I had blocked that fucking scene out from the Dude. original so bad. I was like, I oh, could not believe God. it. Why? I, I hate believe that. it. I hate that fucking scene. <laughs> it it didn't even need to be there. Nope. I liked the real cats that were shown earlier in the film, but you the just dad like shit. Pussy. I it, like cats, but fucking. I know you like cats, but fucking those fake ass CGI, if that fake ass face shit. Oh my god, dude, that that was like some prey shit, bro. When the when the cat is holding on to her like ankle or calf or something, and he he <laughs> rears back and then sinks yeah, his teeth into her leg. I'm for like, fuck's Jesus sake. Christ. Isn't that something out of prey for like what it's the close. hell? The snake. The snake did not the smile snake. at me in, in this movie. <laughs> this is true. Um I, the cats must have a deeper meaning in the book somehow, somewhere. There, I'm sure there's a great scene in the book, but yeah. you know. The, it did not translate well in the movie. Yeah. I think Mark, a lot of things did not translate well from the book to the movie. Smartly omitted in the let me in movie uh what are the worst scenes you got there ziggy i didn't like that that's you know he face kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but the tunnel the attack in the tunnel was cgi dude that was bullshit that looks stupid in mm -hmm. the new one in yeah. the remake in the yeah. remake terrible choice both the attacks were not good yeah they were capable of making some practical attacks there that would have mm -hmm. been just fine 
But that's what they chose to do, and that's one of the things I knock on the remake. Mm-hmm. Faze, any other one? Uh, mm. I don't know. I think those pretty much do it. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think like the the ro- like how the romance didn't do it for me, but no particular scene really like stuck out as terrible. There, it just. It, and like everyone said, it's just twelve-year-old clunky romance. It's whatever. We we kind of briefly talked about the scene earlier, uh, but in the remake, the the fight at the ice pond. I didn't like that one. I didn't like that scene because I felt like that should have been a turning point for Owen, and it, it mm. wasn't. It was almost just like a like. It was almost like the peak, and then he started going back down again. Well, they were copying and, the script too much. <laughs> well, been- no, but no, like like I said though, in the original, that was almost like a point of glee for Oscar. But in this one, he was more disgusted and scared. I and, think probably afraid of retribution. Yeah, hmm. but I felt like they should have played with played with that a little bit more in the remake. And, and let his character actually grow a little bit. Because I, I'll be honest, I really don't... Yeah, but they show him, like, seeing his brothers call him the same thing he gets called. You know what I mean? He has right. empathy. I mean, Owen does. Okay. I don't know. I, they show him to him. I mean, he gets yeah. to see him. He's like, wow. He, I mean, he totally like sits back like... Ah. He's got it as bad as I do. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. But As Tiffany, man. I still don't. I still don't buy that. That that should have been a, a big moment for that character, and it was kind of yeah, sure. blown the off. Gnarly and, ass wound to the ear, a split ear, looked pretty good. It was a great. It was a great uh, special effects. It was good. Uh, dun, 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 dun. My mom sent me an old picture of me. Oh, I try to show that off. You got one. I got one. Right. It's a little blurry. Oh, like, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Remove the worst seat. Holy fuck, it's him. Isn't it though? Overlay. It's him. Hold on. Go to your right just a little bit. That's my no, left. The, the other, the other right. right. Really? You yeah. need my right? Yeah, your right. Yeah. Put it right there. Now close. There Closer. Go. Turn it. Oh, wait. Boom. Oh, my God, man. It's fucking him, dude. <laughs> Wow! All right, you're pretty good. Yeah, I I have like a 10 second screensaver. That's funny. I just wanted to get the pictures side by side. Yeah, but that's pretty good. Wow! Not only wow. Wow! (laughs) Damn it! All right. I got something. I it's a. It was kind of weird to me that. I, I don't know, you know, you didn't seem to bring this one up, but uh, the, the scene when she comes over and changes her bloody clothes. Oh, and fucking let the right one in. Yeah, they show you her fucking weird, deranged pussy. I fucking hated whoa, that. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, what was whoa, 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 whoa. that? Time out, time out. Time out on the weird, deranged pussy talk. <laughs> but seriously, off. though, what was that shit? You know I, that, that was? I'm not like that. No, I did not know what that was. <laughs> This is a twelve-year-old character, Ziggy? supposedly. That Ziggy? that upset me a little bit. Do you know what that is? What am I not up on my vampires enough to know what the fuck's going on there? No, there's a line. I I missed it then. There's a line where she says, "Well, and they say it in the in the remake too. What if I wasn't a girl?" Well, yeah, but then what is that supposed to be? El- Ellie was Elias, and according to in the book. When she was attacked and turned into a vampire, she was also castrated. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Still, I don't like the idea of showing the, us a naked child. That, that right, that's, that's the part the that really upset me. Well, I'm, I doubt that was her. That well, was no, no, it wasn't. It's just no. the, the implication. Yes. The implication I, is bad. The idea I'm that this twelve-year-old is looking at another twelve-year-old naked, sort of, kind of. Oh yeah, but you know, even in the story, it's fine. But they. They did it in Let Me In, but they show Owen, not the fucking full screen. <laughs> in your face, they do get right. right. 
Talk about it's disgusting. Face. It's my face. I mean, it's. I was all I was not myself in a dark room going like instant pedophile all over you like a cloud. Man. I know. Like, what is this yeah. crap? You like, know, you, know, you almost expect not, every pedophile says the same shit. Fuck. I'm just watching a movie. I'm just watching a movie. Oh shit! I say that too. And all uh, of a sudden, uh, fat Pharaoh Agent, yeah, come right. Come in. Knock, knock, knock. It's like, come on, man. I got a big picture fucking window in my living room. You can see it from the fucking street. I, I, I could totally come up and knock on the door and get me, man. It was crazy. Um, excuse me, uh, Ziggy. Uh, I'm Chris Hansen. Uh, why don't you have a seat? Have a seat. No have kidding, a seat. dude. No, don't say cookie. Shh. Like Chris Hansen. That's how I felt. Like he, he's going to be knocking up on this fucking Ellie and whatever the remake name was. Because she, she ain't no 12 year old girl hitting on these kids. Like, what, what's going on here? This whole movie had me creeped out. It was a trip, dude, when well, that happened. I mean, there was, there was a little bit of sexualization of the minor characters and minor actors in both of these films at the time. Oh, certainly. Like a lot of, un, like a lot of very low dressed scenes, even. Like, it was weird. It, I mean, it was a little weird. Weird. weird, yeah. Context of the story. It's but I understand it from the story. That one quick shot. I know Sweden's all laid back. I said it before, you know. But uh, uh, that was like holy shit. You know, I mean, they know that's going to get released here. What the fuck, man? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that wasn't like a problem. I'm, I'm surprised yeah. it wasn't snipped out, like blurred or snipped. Yeah, yep. I would have preferred that. Well, I understand why that scene is there for the story, especially and mm -hmm. some of the other sexualization. I mean, this is a 12 year old that is 200 and something years old, but like I she's said, still, she's still emotionally and physically a 12 year old. She's not, she's learning more. She's just not growing. You, you'll never convince me that a being that is 50 years old is physically or emotionally 12 and then is okay to then be romantically involved with another 12 year old. That just doesn't work in my head. Wow. Well. The, the scene where it is, I think, a little too much that, that you were talking about. But I guess, you know, I mentioned what that is. Uh, he was neutered. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've been doing a lot of research the last couple of days, too. So I actually want to find the book. Or I wanted to find the book until I read that part. And I was like, uh, maybe I don't want to read Maybe this. I don't, yeah. Maybe I don't want to read this book. Right. Um, All of a sudden. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Yeah. Now, um, now Chloe Grace has said in other interviews that in Hollywood she was sexualized early in, early in her career, mm. like by the time she was fifteen or maybe even younger. Um, it confused her at the time. She had also been a victim of uh, some online body shaming just a few years ago, which caused her to avoid the spotlight for years. She's recently come back. Uh, with uh, that show on Prime Video, Peripheral, in which uh, I heard, I think it was canceled, though, after only one season because of the writers and actors' strikes. So, um, uh, you know, and along with some of the other shit that we hear coming out of Hollywood, especially when it comes to, you know, Nickelodeon and Disney and mm -hmm. all that shit, it, it's, it's not that big of a surprise. But, um, you yeah, know, it is, it is weird. It is weird. Like I said, I just didn't expect to have a full screen of that. Right, right. All right, we got to talk about the big, the big deal, and we've kind of touched on it because I think it's a lot of people's favorite scenes in one version or the other. Sure. Uh, the finales. Yep. The pool scene. Um, and here's one place where I did actually like the original better. I like the way they did. The, slaughter, the final slaughter scene in the original better. I will say Same. that. Uh, the imagery is more graphic and powerful, especially staging it in that one solid shot. Yeah. Um, you see little, but you hear everything, and then see pieces of the body, especially the, <laughs> the arm that's holding the, the head down. Yeah. When it, when it jolts and then just drifts into, like, you know, severed into the frame. It's looks uh, yeah. Now, they tried to recreate it for the remake, and I do like the touch that, like, before everything, all the shit starts to go down, you see this shower of glass hit the pool. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a cool fucking visual. You see that, and then it's just like, then you start seeing recreations of 
the original. And mm. I, I have to admit, I like the like the original better. They should have put a little more blood in there when that was, especially when the dude's head came off. You know, what I mean, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, Could use or, more. or when Oscar comes out of the, out, you know, out of the surface, that that water should be red on pretty much all the way around him. I'm willing to bet that was one of those things where it's like all the takes weren't going right. They're like, all right, we're on take seven. We're like out of blood now, so we just got to work with what we got. We got to get this right. Like, Maybe. <laughs> come on now. Uh, that's my guess. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, finales phase. Which one do you like best? Definitely the original. Um, for all the same reasons, pretty much. Yeah, just I really like that still shot. The part that really stuck out to me were the two legs getting dragged back. That really played with your imagination a little bit. Like, what's going on over the water? What is she actually doing to him? Well, that was and really then cool. As soon as the legs come up, the head comes back down. Into Fuck the, water yeah, the head goes down. Oh, yep. dude, it was it was entertaining. It was good. Well, and I think that was the first time we'd ever seen anything like that. You know, like that kind of scene. I know we've seen copies of it since sure. in other movies not just the remake but in other I movies know. we've seen stuff like that but i don't watch enough movies to know but... i want to say night swim had a similar kind of shot sure <laughs> i it? believe it i didn't watch it yeah i don't blame you they ziggy, monster ziggy favorite favorite finale I did appreciate in the new newer one uh like when they were getting dragged through the water you could see kenny's face it was just pure shock you know, it was kind of neat when he went by. Um, but the original had it, man. It was just like, it was a kind of a great payoff. And that she came back to get him and help him. And kind of solidify that they did need each other. And it was all kind of spelled out right there. And I dug it, man. So original one. All right. So all original for, for that one, it sounds like. Uh, we kind of touched on this with, especially with the sexualization conversation, I think, but cultural relevance. And Ziggy's talked about this a lot with not understanding Swedishness. Yeah. So, Swedishness. <laughs> I'm making, I'm making up words now. Why not? Why not? Um, you know, I, I, I like, I like the themes that are explored in the, in both films, really. You know, it's a love story pretty much first and foremost, and the connection between the main characters is played out well. And, one thing I did notice is they do kind of allude in a way to this may not be the proper term, but alt relationships. Um, you know, especially when we talk about it earlier, uh, Ellie asked Oscar, you know, would you like me if I, if I wasn't a girl? Right. You know, uh, now I don't know if that necessarily counts as representation or inclusion. I but... think it was accidental, like before it's time kind of thing. Like, I don't think that is the direction they were trying to go. Well, but I don't know. I think I think it could be interpreted as that. If it was, they would be real subtle with it. Sure, which, sure. And um, I, I think that aspect was handled well, you know. However, I do not like the sexualization of kids. A little no. too much of that in this. No. Again, and that's 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 Sweden for you. And and it's, I found it. Was I wasn't aware of that. Shocking. I've always known. Japan to be the one to sexualize kids, but here we go. There's other countries again. Shockingly different culture, and and it's funny because I, I feel like Japan. I can relate more to what how they live their lives over there, you know, and their how their bit day to day lives go and stuff. I just I just not well, the I, urban I, aspect of it. Sure, yeah, you know, we've seen it so mm -hmm. much over the years. I mean, and Sweden not so much. So mm -hmm. definitely well, a shock. Yeah, I agree a that. lot. A lot of the foreign foreign films, you know, tend to push those limits when it comes to sexualization of, of just people you know uh, you know children included though and, mm -hmm. and that yeah that's a little bit weird for me nope, they're gonna come and find out you've watched oh you saw let the right one in get up on the fucking wall right now <laughs> nah. let me scan let me scan your uh did you history. like it let me, let me check yeah. your browser history what what's your favorite scene mm -hmm. <laughs> damn it um all right anything culturally to talk about here and we we've kind of already covered most of it relate to the american over the yeah. swedish that's the all right guest. let me in had the forest you know i had the the arcade machine i had the where do you know where your kids are at 10 p.m thing had a few other little things right. sprinkled in there very forced in my opinion but you know it, it was but it also sets 
I think it sets a tone. And yeah. the, the do you know where your kids thing is, I already talked about how, how great a fucking shot that is. I don't, that was I, don't, I, I was I like that one. I don't yeah. care if it was forced or not. It looked good and it served its purpose, you know, because it had that ironic uh, moment of, you know, do you know where your kids are as the reflection is showing your kid disappear in the night? Mm-hmm. So we take place in New Mexico, right? Shot in Albuquerque, by the way. <laughs> uh, it snows like that in New Mexico? Yeah. Wow, man. It's like I didn't thought I'd get deep snow like that up there. Oh, Shit. it gets cold in the desert. It's, it's a uh, area. Temperature polarizes like that. It just right. it's shocking to think of when we were there and it was 115 degrees outside. <laughs> it works both ways. Yeah. But it's a dry heat. No, we're uh-huh. not to say that. Is it a dry cold too? Probably. <laughs> That's right. All right. Last couple of topics. Staying power of the films. Does let the right one in have more staying power than let me in? Ziggy. I'll say yes because it's it, it, you always go to where it started it all, man. And that's the one that we wouldn't have let me in without let the right one in. It's as simple as that. And um, obviously because they made the same fucking movie. So, yes, that's uh, let the right one in for me. Phase. Honestly, I don't feel like either of these have a lot of staying power, but let, let the right one in would have more. Apparently, let me in has a sequel. So that one ended up having more staying power technically, but I, I don't know. It's just neither of them appealed to me that much. I guess in the end, and, and, and you know there were certain scenes they like, but in, in in a whole, I don't know. Staying power wise, I don't think either of them have any. But I agree with Ziggy. The original would have more. Hmm. Right. Good well, vampire tales, man. They're I mean, really- maybe that's just my salty opinion because of the things that I don't like about these films, you know. Baze does not want 12-year-old vaginas on his no. screen, period. Or, you know, implied vaginas. Or, period. I meant, you know, fucking Exclamation point. <laughs> there ain't no period at the end of this. Question mark? Like the phallus. No, no, no. You can't say that. <laughs> Question mark? No, that's got the fucking tickler on it, man. Are you crazy? God damn it. Turn it up. Put it put it on a uh, bottle rocket. Oh my god. Oh, we just lost two subs. <laughs> oh my god. All right. This is this is one of those rare occasions where I think both films stand up over time. And okay. one of the reasons I would and I nor, I would recommend both to new viewers. If you haven't seen either, I'd recommend watching both and then choose your favorite after that if you want. Um I do like them both. I give them both very high ratings. Um, if you want to pick one over the other, that's up to you after you see both of them. Sure. Um, this is one of, these are one of those that I, I would almost watch both of these together every time I wanted to watch one. I, you I know what see, I mean? I could see wanting the flavor of one over the other, but I don't know about watching them back to back. I think I I think most and I've done this before when I've watched these movies. I've you know, when somebody recommended Let the Right One In, I think I found Let Me In first and thought, yeah, maybe that's what they meant. And then, you know, found that that was a, a original and, and ended up watching both of them like in the same night. I've done that with these movies before. And I did it again a couple of times this week. So uh. um but I think both of them are worth sticking around for. So, mm. all, right. all right, last, the final and most important question of them all. Oh, of course. Did we need a remake? Did we need to copy and paste the fucking script? No. Hold on, hold on, hush, hush, please. <laughs> Ziggy. <laughs> I think there's enough uh, cultural differences to where you can do this and get away with it. And if you do it the right way like this, then yes, sure. I would have probably given it five years minimum before I would have thought about it, but that's just me. 
It might have been a time limit on their uh, rights of the script or whatever the you know so on the option or something. Yeah, I can feel that. Yeah. <clears throat> Faze, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I could agree with Ziggy with the cultural differences. You know, there is a reason, you know, for there to be a remake there, if one to be made. I just hate how similar the script ended up being. Like, and like Grizzly just said, need is kind of loaded. I mean, we certainly didn't need one. Not certainly not two years fucking later. I would prefer like ten. You know, maybe ten years later, a remake would have been all right. Okay, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask the question I did at the beginning of the night. Had you had either of you seen this movie? In mm -mm. I'll even say in 2010. Had either of you seen this movie in 2010? The original. Both for the first time last night. Both for the first time last night. Yep. Ziggy, do you happen to remember approximately what year you would have seen either of these? I, again, I believe I had the DVD sent to me for the first one. And uh, I, I fucking want to say I went to the theater, but I have no recollection of seeing it and having like a positive memory of it. Sure. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would not have seen the original by 2010. There's at that point in my life and what I was doing at that at that time and the amount of movies I was not going to, or I was going to, which was very few or zero. I would not have seen the original by 2010. I may have seen, you know, the remake at some point if I hadn't gotten into Death Curse Society. But, uh, yes, I say yes, we did need a remake. Um, how many Swedish films had you seen in 2010, Ziggy? Faze? Yeah, none. Zero. Uh, none? Yeah. That I know of, at least. I wasn't a big fan of foreign films until we started the DCS and we started, I started kind of expanding my knowledge well, and becoming true. more of a horror, a genre cinephile. Um, some of the best horror does come from overseas and I get that now, but uh, now seems a lot more different than in 2010. You know, we didn't we didn't have streaming where 90% of the movies that have ever been made are available at our fingertips. Right. You know, what were you going to do? What were your methods of finding a movie in 2010? Either the Netflix, like you're talking about, having something sent to you. Video stores maybe, are still surviving. Video stores were on the way out. They were. Mm -hmm. But you had your your Coke machine video stores, your Redbox or whatever. I, I I use those a lot back then. I think if it wasn't for streaming, and you know, if if Let Me In had not been made, I think Let the Right One In would have probably been lost a little bit, at mm -hmm. least until streaming made it easier to find yeah i disagree I, it was i because I, I don't remember where i read about it but i remember reading about it and I, I get high praise and this is something that you know needed to be made and you know it was probably like, in a fangoria or something and it was probably it was probably fangoria covering let me in and just discussing just and just discussing that it's a remake of a swedish film that's getting very high marks and praise that's right so the context of the articles that's but that's my point exactly is would let the right <clears throat> one in be as loved if there wasn't an american remake that because i doubt 90 percent of american movie going audiences go to you know look for swedish horror films no <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> them mentioning an American remake at that time, but I, who knows? Who knows, man? It's a long time ago. I, I made the point earlier about like the last few times I've gone to a movie with somebody and, and Speak No Evil, the trailer for that one comes on. And I mentioned that's a remake from a couple of years ago. And they're like, oh, I've never heard of it. And I'm like, well, yeah, because it's a German film or you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and they're like, oh, yeah. 
No, I probably wouldn't watch a German film anyway, or wh whatever, you know. And they're like, yeah. So, um, I think this movie, I think the remake only helped the original. At it least get a little bit of popularity or whatever. Now, is, is it better? Not, not to everybody. I think the original is, or, uh, is great, but I think, I think the remake is better. But 89% of the people that co contacted us on YouTube disagree with me <laughs> and think that the original was better. And most of the time I would say that, but I also am trying not to be that kind of critic that is always like, well, the, the, the original is always better. <laughs> I'm trying not to be that person, you know? Sure. So. I just think there's a... <clears throat> so, but most of the time it is yeah you know a little more simplicity and a little more grit here in this the sweetest version and i think that's why it's you know i, I yeah man they're, they're so fucking close it's so so, so silly it, it is i lean towards the remake because the things i hate in the remake i hate less than the things i hate in the original and that's purely it Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You like the remake better? Faith? By the slightest of all margins. Okay. Ziggy, what were you saying? I, I stuck with the original. You stuck with the original? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, let me let me measure let me measure hairs here. Like you say by the by the narrowest of margins, phase. Because the remake didn't have a close up pussy shot. That's pretty much it. Okay. So <laughs> 50, 55 45, is that what you're saying? More like 5149 51 yeah okay 51 like, close so literally by the slim by a pussy hair if let me in wasn't a copy and paste script it would be a lot farther yeah. and yes by a <laughs> that took me a minute <laughs> that's terrible bro you're welcome damn but yeah no if it wasn't for the script being copied and pasted let me in would be a lot higher but no but the fact that it doesn't have that ridiculous scene in it, let me in wins a point. A one point. I just keep seeing <laughs> keep seeing Ziggy's reaction just <laughs> All right, Ziggy, how about you? Uh by what kind of margin are we talking? <laughs> that you like the original? 60 40? 60 70 30? Yeah, like 65 35. 65 35. You got really okay. quiet. I did. did you get quiet? You got far from your mic is what happened. I turned this way, yeah. So yeah. I'm not facing okay. this way, but yes. Why would I, I okay, clearly, like I said, I I like the remake better than the original. I love I love them both. I would probably give them both eights or nines. Or okay. eight and a nine. Uh somewhere in that that re that respect. Uh but they would both be eight and higher, which is like my top tier movies. Um, but if anybody were to ever say to me, hey, should I watch this one or that one when it came to this? I would say watch both. I'd probably, I would, pro I would I'd probably say watch both in the same sitting. Oh, see, that's, that's, the that's tough because it's like the same fucking I, I hated watching both in the same sitting because it was like watching Did the you? same fucking thing yeah. twice. I took a day off. In between, and it wasn't as bad. It just it was the very familiar, though, you know? I prefer the couple of years in between, personally, like a refresh. Tarek also says, I think if Let Me In had never gotten made, a remake would have happened another decade later and likely would have been a total butchering <clears throat> of the plot. Uh, yeah. I, have a feeling, I have a feeling David Gordon Green and uh, Danny McBride would have gotten a hold of this and written like <laughs> a, a trilogy legacy sequel. You're kind of right, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of wrong hands this could end up in. I'm gonna go get this peanut butter off my penis. <laughs> the, uh, and damn it. And Oscar, Oscar is played by uh, Sebastian Bach as an aging vampire. <laughs> Lorena shows up just in time to hear, "Gotta get the peanut butter off my penis." What did I miss? <laughs> she probably doesn't remember that line from Halloween 2018, but that's what we were making fun of. Yeah, Danny McBride's writing pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, out of context, though, ta you talking about peanut butter on your penis is almost as bad as seeing, you know, full-fledged 12-year-old non-vag crevices yeah, on your screen. I'm saying, 
right. I, it was it was forced pedophilia, and I didn't ask. It was, for yeah, it. forced pedophilia that nobody asked for. Nobody but, asked for. But there wasn't anything there. It was stitches. Well, right. It's still disgusting. It's still crotch. It's still supposed to be a twelve-year-old, sorta. Like yeah. I, it's just it, it's too much for me, man. It, it makes me angry. <laughs> I forgive them, but I understand his rage. I do yeah. too. I, this is interesting. Tarek said someone should make a scene for scene cut of both films, flip back and forth every scene would be interesting. Oh, that'd be an undertaking, but brilliant. It could be done though, and you would see the mirroring that Matt Reeves does of the original film. It's it's bizarre. Once, dude, it's it's disturbing once you catch it. Sure. I'll just do a close up of my armpit for the vagina scene. <laughs> Wait, what? Or no, like, do this. Like this. No, do like, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, do, 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 do this. Where are you like? <laughs> oh my god! Sick fuck! I used to. If I ever had my arms crossed like this, like you know, just like when I was working or whatever, there used to be this door guy that would come over and like just immediately start drilling into oh my in between my my elbow crevice. It was hysterical. I prefer the, using the ass as the fake boobs, like in South Park. Just draw a couple circles. You got boobs. Put a bra on it. There we go. Oh, Sherrick Lord. says, it was made to disturb the fuck out of you, and I have some news. It worked. What? Yeah. It's the age thing that upset me, but yes, the, the, the look of it certainly disturbed me, sure. I, I don't know what the hell I was supposed to be looking at. It's, so and castration just seems weird to me, too. It doesn't even look like that to me, necessarily. Well, but, no, none of that was implied either in that movie. But I mean, right. what we need there is like one of those old school movies where they had the sound that would go before something heavy would happen, or the they had the one with the glove, like Boarding House. They had <laughs> the hand, it would go like this on the camera and shit, and then, oh, you knew something heavy was going to happen, and then, right. bam, vagina. <laughs> bam, vagina. Bam, vagina. God. It, it's what it was. I think my score would be like 70 or 70 30 okay. remake i think i'd lean that far but again i like them both they're both high eight and up on my rating score one last time we want to thank our final girls and guys and all of our members chris Lorena, bd and tyrone our crazy ralph's bell's fancy creations dr smiley raymond and the whole damn enchilada pod and of course our camp counselors 42nd Street Pete, Corey, Luke, Jimmy and Rachel, Stacy Lynn, Orlando, Patricia, Kristen, and JJ. Oh, sorry. I was waiting for you to push the old one and we got...